With this video, I begin a small mini-series within a series centered around this massive space station build. In today's episode, we'll be looking at building this whole structure from modular pieces, so I don't have to hand place as many blocks, making upgrades to the wall builder for better performance, getting attacked by enemy drones, and almost losing our entire space station and mothership. That, and probably a little bit more, coming up right now. So we left off in the last episode with us building and using this wall builder drone to automatically run back and forth along a projected wall and weld up that wall while I go take care of other parts of the build. There was a little problem though that emerged after using the drone for a good while. The wall builder has an incredibly large carrying capacity of five large small grid cargo containers which, including the welders, it can hold about 30,000 steel plates, which is a lot of weight. To break inertia and make it move with that much weight, I had to add more thrusters, and had to add more gyroscopes to be able to turn and position the thing after filling it up. This worked great to move the wall builder and make it operate very reliably, but it also created a situation where it became overpowered when it got near empty. As it got down to that last container full of plates, its movement became more and more erratic, overshooting when it should really stop and bouncing around with its light load and just not working like it should. My solution is twofold. When it gets down to that last container full of plates, I just take manual control and zip it back and forth a few times and use up the remaining contents, at least just for now. Soon, I hope to apply the new event controller. This is an excellent application for that block and should do exactly what I need. The event controller can trigger based on the percentage filled of a cargo container. So I should be able to set it up in a way where as a cargo container gets to some number, let's say 50%, I just reduce the amount of override thrust I'm applying, maybe proportionally by half. So the wall builder will operate at the same thrust to weight ratio when it's empty as it does when it's full. Problem solved. I just need to be patient till we get that event control block. With that situation managed, I focused on the next bit of utility needed to build this space station. I mentioned it in one of the more recent episodes, but it became even more clear to me that I could make reusable blueprints of the different wall sections of the space station. Hand placing a bunch of angle sided blocks that alternate between two or three different forms gets tedious, especially when you have to place thousands. So I started making just a single unique section at a time, like this angled triangular corner section. I blueprinted it and then started reprojecting that wall piece whenever needed. Now, a lot of people will do that sort of thing in creative where you have unlimited resources and instant welding. But for this survival challenge, and to keep things real, I made mine in the instance, and it required a couple special things to do it. First, I had to just place down the unwelded version of the blocks in the shape I wanted to create, as a one-time thing. To make sure it was sized and fitted to what I needed, I went ahead and built it attached to the grid. Once done, I ground off the blocks that held the new wall piece attached so I had a free-floating chunk of wall that I could blueprint. With the blueprint created, it was a simple matter of using a couple merge blocks to reattach it and make it part of the original grid, then replace the blocks I welded off. It maybe sounds like a lot, but considering I was going to have to replicate many of these shapes eight or more times, the savings and effort paid for itself, even if I only had to do it twice. Plus, if I was using the wall builder build strategy, it kind of works off a blueprint and not a placed frame of a block. It was right about here though, after having built the main hangar floor, the lower engineering deck floor, and assembling some of the lower deck walls, that I realized more iron was needed. Much more iron. So it was time to venture out with our new and improved HM36 miner and go get some more ore. Previously, 
I had improved and upgraded its defensive guns and added side drones that I could detach to either go intercept an enemy drone before it got to me or just for extra firepower. These again should be able to get a nice upgrade in the next Space Engineers version that'll have the grid AI. I'll be able to add a combat AI block, set it up to go intercept or attack an enemy in some way, and release the hounds to go do their work whenever I spot an enemy. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Right now, if I want to go and try to fly and intercept an enemy drone, I have to just do it within my mining ship and take manual control, which is fine. It's just not ideal. The AI grid blocks will be ideal. In the minute Phil and I saw it, we decided it was ideal, didn't we, Phil? Nah, that's right, Bob. But ideal. That's exactly the word we use, too. Ideal. It was a good thing I did the upgrades, though, as I did get almost immediately attacked. In fact, I got attacked by two waves of drones while I was out on this single mining run. And all the position weaponry did a pretty admirable job. It took a couple dings, but the overall ship was well intact. It was also a little exciting to get some action. The miner performed great, and the survival kit was exactly what I needed to make some plates to fix up the damaged pieces before heading back. I just really liked the look and operation of this miner, and very utilitarian. The only huge mistake I made on this ore run was not marking a waypoint or having a clear HUD beacon for the mothership and space station. Yeah, I kind of lost it in space. A rookie mistake. I knew generally where it was, but it took a little over an hour of searching around the vague asteroid area where I was pretty sure I left it. I thought this was it. I thought I was going to have to start all over with just me and my all-purpose miner and a load of ore, which I would have done. I want this playthrough and its challenges to be real, but I did find it, so all was good. Back at the space station, with my big haul of iron ore, I was able to resume making hundreds of thousands of steel plates and welding up more pieces. At first, the station was a bit plain and didn't look like much with the platform, but now that the lower deck and all that is getting assembled, it's starting to look like something. Overall, the central part of the station will be a symmetrical octagon containing the main hangar and tapering down to form the lower engineering deck transitioning to a square floor. That lower deck area will have interior thrusters, gyroscopes, hydrogen tanks, containers, and that sort of thing, with a similarly shaped upper deck that'll have more of a control room feel with an aesthetically pleasing interior, good views to the outside and all that. With these lower angled odd shaped pieces, I really couldn't use the wall builder. It's only designed to work on regular squarish blocks. So for this angled side pieces, I made another drone. This one I called the Wall Skimmer, which was really just a modified version of the Wall Builder, without the long arms extending down to grab onto the edge of a wall. But it also wasn't automated, though I was tempted. No, this time I just manually flew the drone and let it skim over the surface of a wall section to weld it together. It was kind of an interesting looking welder as it reminded me in some ways of a flat iron running over the surface trying to flatten it out. It looks okay, it's pretty compact, can hold a lot of material like the wall builder, and I have the option of converting it back to the wall builder style by just grinding off a few pieces and welding on the arms using the blueprint, which is already integrated into the wall builder. I built it using my mothership's rotational printer and shipbuilding rig. Oh, which reminds me, when I went to go print this wall skimmer, it was a good use for my movable control room that I could pivot farther out of the way for building larger ships. It was just really cool to see all the utilities coming together as I thought they would. I've got a long ways to go on this space station, and next time we'll be adding some basic defenses and functional blocks to the station, completing more of the walls and floors, maybe encountering more enemy resistance. Who knows? But I'm obsessed with this massive build, and I'm learning quite a bit about the special challenges of building on a platform that moves around during construction in the weightlessness of space and also just figuring out better ways to build things at this kind of large scale. 
I thought the mothership was big, but this thing is on a whole different level. See you next time.